Welcome friends, today we are going to talk about spinothalamic tracts. So in this particular type lecture, there will be something which will be top priority like to trace the spinothalamic tract from periphery to cortex. So remember this will be coming from the uh, receiver side towards the brain side it will go to spinothalamic. From spine to thalamus you can understand by the name. We have to identify the key transition region where the transition is going to happen, location of cell bodies, Location of synapse between first and second order neurons, identification of uh, depositions. So let's start the topic. First of all, we have to see the anterolateral system in the overview format. So the anterolateral system comprises of all the fibers which are carrying especially the pain and temperature sensation from spinal cord to thalamus and brain stem. Some fiber branch out through the brain stem to contact pain modulating system. So you can see there are four components, spinothalamic, spinohypothalamic, spinomesencephalic tract and spinoreticular tract. So spinothalamic means to thalamus and then to the corticals. Spinohypothalamic means to hypothalamus as the name suggests. Spinomesencephalic means to midbrain, periaqueductal, gray part. And spinal reticular means to the brain stem reticular formation, locus will cerulius and raphine nucleus. So this module, this lecture will help you to focus on a spinothalamic tract. It is a tract with most often test as a part of neurological examination. Next, we can see the different pathways, different tracts as you can see here. So here, first of all, we have to see the diagram. You can see here, this is the pain stimulation. Then by spinal cord, it will move upside to the thalamus or it may move to the hypothalamus or it may move to the midbrain or it may move to the brain stem reticular formation. So different systems will be there, which will be called as anterolateral system. You can see there will be afterwards from thalamus, it will may move to the medial pain system or lateral pain system. And then there will be a pain matrix. So one by one, I will click it and the uh, wave of pain or wave of reflex will be seen like you can see spinothalamic so this is how the stimulus is going to reach from a spinous part to the thalamus part these fiber projects to the various nuclei of the thalamus from there they project to the cortical pain matrix this allows for the conscious experience of pain so you should remember from here thalamus is what actually thalamus is the part of the uh, diencephalon which acts as a relay center so here everything will go and then it will command the things to move in the particular direction where the centers are present in the cortex. Then you can see spinal hypothalamic. It will move to the hypothalamus via hypothalamic tract. These fibers project to the hypothalamus. This is how a direct visceral response to pain. For example, increased heart rate, nausea, etc. So when some pain is there, some stress is there and you feel that your heart rate is increasing, it means it has followed the spinal hypothalamic tract. Remember everything is starting from spinal only because they have to move from spinous to the other part. So they are actually part of ascending tracts. Then spinal mesos, you can see it goes to the periaqueductal gray from the midbrain. So these fiber project to the periaqueductal gray. This is an important integration center that has downstream influence on the other brain stem system that modulate the pain. So here via this tract, other brain stem system, wherever the modulation can be done, it will be done from here. And the last is the spinal reticular tract. So you can see here locus center and raphe nuclei, there will be two parts. So these fibers project to brain stem nuclei of the reticular formation, including serotonic urgic, raphe nuclei, non adrenergic locus cellulose. So these nuclei play a critical role in the modulation of the brain. So this is a overview about the anterolateral system tracts. So where they are located? So you can see the anterolateral system is located in the anterior part of lateral column in the white matter of spinal cord. Remember lateral column, anterior part in white matter. So anterolateral system you can see here this is spinothalamic tract in the lateral column. This is the lateral column. This is the anterior column. This is the posterior column. You can recall the uh, previous uh, lecture you can revise of the spinal cord where I have given you the a TS identification values. So this is lateral column among them anterior part in the white matter there will be the spinothalamic tracts. Then 
as an ascending sensory tract, spinal thalamic tract transmit the following things. So first of all, non-discriminative touch, pain, and temperature. So spinal thalamic tract, we can see from here. With these additional tracks, we see the nautical distance spinal tract with the other white metal tracks in the spinal cord. So you can see this is the spinothalamic tract, the orange color, anterior corticospinal tract. Cortico is coming from cortex. So you can see they are present in the same periphery. Then lateral cortical spinal, they are very near to each other. Then fasciculus in the middle, posterior side, and fasciculus cuneatus again. So this is how you can understand the relationship between the spinothalamic tracts with the other tracts which are moving in this particular part of the spinal cord. Now, how the uh, somatotropic organization is going to take place, you can see here, fibers in spinothalamic tract, so somatotropic arrangement. As seen below, fibers carry the information from the lower body are found lateral within the tract. And the fibers from higher centers are found medially within the tract. The so cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. So you can see those are coming from the lower body, they are found more laterally. Then those are coming from the higher center, they turn towards the medial side. The so CTLS, it is just so near the somatotropic means how the things are going to be arranged in that particular tract if the fiber is coming from whatever level of the body. The so CTLS is the main four parts. Now we have to see the blood supply. So anterior spinal artery supplies the two third of spinal cord, which includes also the anterolateral system with the spinothalamic tract. So it is actually anterior spinal artery which supplies them all the blood supplies. You can see spinothalamic tract here and anterior spinal artery, which is going to give supply to that particular region. Next, we have to see the general anatomy of uh, the uh, TS. So first of all, fibers carrying the information about the pain and temperature enter in the posterior bone. Then the fiber synapse occurs. Uh, the fibers now travel up and down a few segments in the leisure tract. The fiber synapse across the substantia gelatinosa posterior bone. Substantia gelatinosa, we can we'll talk about it later also when we are going to talk about the acute pain movement. These second order neurons now cross the midline in the anterior white commissure and ascend into the spinothalamic tract. So one by one you can see that this is the lesion tract, substantia gelatinosa, anterior white commissure and now you can see the movement of the tract. So this means that information about pain and temperature from one side of the body will ascend in the contralateral side in the spinal cord. So they will move first of all in the posterior horn, then few segments down they will come to the lesser tract, then they will follow to the synapse will be occur in the substantia gelatinosa, then they will go towards the anterior white commissio and ultimately via the spinothalamic tract they will move outward. So this is how you can see again, so these were the parts, again you can see the parts this is very important. First of all, lesions tract, substantia gelatinosa, and anterior white commissure, and then the movement of the stimulus. So it will be contralateral part which is going to receive the uh, stimulus. Next, you can see the three dimensional structures one shown here. The spinal cord that demonstrate the sensory input to the anterolateral system. Notice how primary neurons move up and down level within the lesion tract in the posterior horn spinal cord before synapsing with the secondary neurons in the substantia gelatinosa. So first, they will move either up or down. You can see here, up or down movement. Then the further pathway will be carried out. Now we have to see some micrograms or spinocylmic tract from the spinous to the thalamus. So we are going to click one by one and you can see the movement. So first of all, spinal cord. The exons enter the spinal cord from the spinal ganglion, travel up or down one or two segments in the lesser tract, and then snaps in the posterior horn. As we have seen previous slide, exons of secondary neurons cross the midline in the anterior white commissure, 
and ascent as the spinal thermal track in the spinal cord. Now you can see the track. Again, you can recall this is spinal ganglion. Then it will move in the lesser track, either one or two the spinal cord level up or down vertebral level. Then it will synapse. Then it will cross the powder and they will do the forward to the, the spinal thalamic tract. This will happen in the spinal cord region. Next, in caudal medulla, the spinal thalamic tract lies lateral to the pyramids, which contain the corticospinal tract. So, in the pyramids, actually, corticospinal tracts are coming down. So, it will be on the lateral side that they will move up. That is, spinal tract. You can see these are the tracts. Spinal thalamic tracts which are moving upwards. You can see the this diagram also that how the movement is going to happen. It is moving from the spinal cord to the thalamus region. Next, it is the rostral medulla. So, in the rostral medulla, the spinal thalamic tract lies between the inferior olivary nucleus and the nucleus of a spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve. So, if you are not recalling the parts of brain stem, so you can see the lecture which has been already uploaded about the overview of brain stem. So, you can see here. Again, in the lateral side only, between the inferior olivary nucleus and nucleus of spinal tract of trigeminal nerve, this spinal thalamic tract will pass upwards towards the pons side. Then in the pons, the spinal thalamic tract lies just lateral to the medial lamiscus of the posterior column, middle lamiscus ascending tract. You can see here, this part, from here it will move upwards. So remember, in pons, the spinal thalamic tract will lie just lateral to medial lamiscus. Then in midbrain, the spinal thalamic tract lies just posterior to the middle lamiscus of posterior column, middle lamiscus ascending tract. So this will be the pathway from where the spinal thalamic tract will move upside. Then ultimately it will reach to the thalamus. The spinal thalamic tract terminates in the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus, BPL, ventral postural lateral nucleus of thalamus. From there, the fiber projects through the internal capsule and corona radiator to terminate in the primary somatosensory cortex. So in thalamus, it will be confirmed where it is going to move. So it's going to move through the internal capsule and corona radiator to terminate in the primary somatosensory cortex. So this whole thing, you can see movement from spinal cord to the thalamus and then these type of fibers will be called as spinothalamic tract. So you can see one more thing that how we are going to summarize this particular type of knowledge. So the summary which we can take, the anterolateral system first of all carries the sensory information about the pain, temperature, and non discriminative touch. The spinal thalamic tract is one of the part of the anterolateral system, which is more famous actually. The sensory fibers of this tract have free nerve ending in the periphery that snap with the secondary neuron in the posterior horn. You can remember that part, which we have seen in previous slide, crosses the midline and ascends towards the thalamus. From there, the nuclear terminate in the primary somatosensory. So this particular type of knowledge will help you at how the spinal thalamic tract ascends within the spinal cord for understanding the processing and modulation of the pain which is occurring. In next slide, we are going to talk about the cortico or descending tracts which are coming downside.